We have a solar storm that was a near miss, some fast solar wind that's on its way, and some bright regions that are just around the corner. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Space weather this week is definitely calming down compared to the series of solar storms that were launched last week. As we switch to our Earth-facing sun, you can see the culprit right there. That's region 2771, and pow, it fires an Earth-directed solar storm right there. That was one of several, but it actually fired most of these solar storms reasonably east of Earth, including this one. We thought it was going to hit, but it actually went east and southward of Earth, so it kind of was a fizzle at Earth. But one of the solar storms this region did fire actually did hit the Stereo A spacecraft, which is also east of Earth, and man, was it a beautiful specimen. It was actually a lot stronger than we anticipated, so if the one that actually missed Earth had actually hit us, we could have easily gotten to a G2 level solar storm or larger, which really could have caused some issues for that co uh, Starlink constellation that was launched just a few days ago. So we're glad that didn't happen, but meanwhile, as we take a look at the Sun, we have seen that this, those bright regions have rotated off of the Earth-facing disk. We're back to a spotless sun right now, but we do have a remnant coronal hole that's going to be rotating into the Earth strike zone and sending us some fast solar wind over the next couple days. Probably won't be all that much, probably keep us at unsettled conditions, but also we see the bright regions on the east limb. These regions are going to be rotating into Earth view here in the next couple days, and they could boost that solar flux and keep it in that marginal range for amateur radio operators and emergency responders. Switching to our M-flare threat level, as we take a look at the X-ray flux, wow, look at this, oh my gosh, you can see this activity. What a change, huh? It definitely lets you know our sun is waking up a bit. Now back on the 15th, that's when we got that C-class flare. That was the largest flare we've seen for quite some time. And then since then, we've actually had quite a few B-class flares, including a couple long duration flares. That's where we saw a lot of those solar storms being launched was during those events. And But since then, since about about the 22nd or so, you can see things have gotten quieter and quieter, and we're pretty much back to flatline at the moment. That's because those bright regions have now rotated off of the sun's west limb and are on the sun's far side. So we're going to stay a little bit quiet like this for a while, but the solar flux is still hanging on. The x-ray flux is back to quiet, but the solar flux is still in the low 70s, and so we're hanging on to marginal radio propagation on Earth's day side. And with the new regions that are going to be rotating into Earth view over the next couple days, we could boost that solar flux even more just a little bit. Switching to our solar storm conditions, you can see we've been reasonably quiet over the past week or more. We've been hovering between kind of quiet conditions and unsettled conditions. As a matter of fact, where we got the biggest noise was right around the 18th and the 19th. This was with that solar storm that missed us to the south and to the east. And it looks like there was a bit of disturbed solar wind in and around that storm, which doesn't surprise me. And that managed to bump us to unsettled conditions and bring some aurora down to kind of the top of mid-latitude. So there were actually actually some beautiful views seen in places like Scotland and uh, Saskatchewan and stuff like that, but really didn't last all that long. We got uh, kind of quiet again, and then we got hit by a pocket of fast solar wind that was kind of coming after that solar storm, and that bumped us back up to unsettled conditions again with just a little bit of aurora, more about in high latitudes than much show at mid latitudes. And since then, things have quieted back down. We're back to quiet conditions, but we do have a chance again for some more fast solar wind with this coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth strike zone, most likely it will bump us back up to unsettled conditions. So you high latitude aurora photographers, you might be in for yet another show. Here's a nice little treat. While we were waiting for that partly Earth-directed solar storm to arrive on August 19th, astronauts aboard the ISS got a glimpse of something special. Amid the weak aurora caused by disturbed solar wind ahead of the strong storm that ultimately missed us, Russian cosmonaut Ivan Wagner caught something unexpected. Did you see them? For just a moment, five bright lights appear in the distance, just above the airglow, right before the aurora rolls into view. But don't blink, or you'll miss them. These space guests, as Wagner has affectionately called them, have definitely raised eyebrows on social media. Called everything from aliens to meteors, these guests are likely not guests at all, but rather five of the newest members of the Starlink constellation. Considering the latest launch of 58 more Starlink satellites was completed just the day before, this is the most likely culprit. 
Of course, official word from Rose Cosmos on what the guests truly are is forthcoming. However, this is not the first time Starlink satellites have photobombed Aurora pictures from the ISS. Back on April 13th, another sighting of a Starlink train was discovered by Ricardo Rossi. Once again, we see a long line of satellites just skimming the top of the Aurora region. But thanks to Dr. Marco Rulangbrook, the guests in that photo have been successfully doxxed. But just as the shots back in April, the recent sighting really illustrates how closely these low-Earth orbiting satellites come to the Aurora. In fact, many of these satellites pass right through the electric current systems that feed the Aurora. One only needs to look for the columns of light often seen extending like fingers upwards into space at the top of the Aurora as evidence of these current systems. But these systems are hazardous sources of surface charging for these low-flying satellites, and during a big solar storm, these currents get much bigger, much stronger, and the atmosphere you see lighting up puffs out to higher altitudes. So while the recent anticipated solar storm may have missed us, these pictures are a reminder of the kind of tests these low-Earth orbiting satellites must yet endure. Because the new solar cycle is definitely ramping up, and the next decent-sized solar storm headed towards Earth, it may not be a near miss. So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our partially far-sighted monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun pretty much from the side. And when you take a look at Stereo A, you don't see a lot going on in the south, but oh my goodness, take a look at the action in the north. We've got a coronal hole that's up in that northern hemisphere, kind of a bent-looking thing. That is part of the coronal hole that's going to be rotating into the Earth strike zone here over the next couple days and send us some fast solar wind. But if you look just beyond it, look at all these little dabs of bright paint. They're not really sunspots, they're just bright regions, but my goodness, there sure are a lot of them. And it looks like a little bit of a filament in there, so we've got some kind of strange stuff going on. So these regions, as they begin to rotate into Earth view over the next couple days, they could easily boost the solar flux for amateur radio operators and emergency responders and keep us well into the marginal range for radio propagation on Earth's day side. So that's good news. And on top of that, if you look at that region that's on the very part far east limb of Stereo's view, pow, it fires a solar storm just as it's rotating into view. So we're going to keep watching watching that region to see if there's going to be more activity. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the first quarter phase on our way to a new moon, with the new moon being on the second. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, you're going to have this bright companion, so you're going to have to check your local rise and set times. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating some fast solar wind from a corona hole that's rotating in through the Earth's strike zone. And we have experienced the, some fast solar wind from this coronal hole before, and last time it actually was a bit stronger than we anticipated. Plus, Earth is sitting a little bit above the equator compared to where it oftentimes is, and that may intensify our hit by this fast solar wind. We'll just have to see. But NOAA is expecting at un, uh, uh, high latitudes, they're expecting unsettled conditions to possibly active conditions with up to about a 30 or even a 50% chance of a major storm. Don't know if that's a bit overblown. It's kind of hard to say. Now, mid-latitudes, we're only expecting unsettled conditions, but we do have up to about a 15% chance of a minor storm. And again, we'll just have to see. Most likely, the storm is going to be fleeting at mid-latitudes especially, but we have been surprised before. So you roar photographers, if you're adventurous, you might get a chance to see it at mid-latitudes, but at high latitudes, you definitely should be in for a show. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything continues to be in the green when it comes to big solar flares. We have a spotless sun right now, so we have absolutely no risk for radio blackouts, and that should make uh, you GPS users on Earth's day side very happy. Your reception should continue to be pretty top-notch. Now, we also are managing to stay in the low 70s for solar flux, and this is even with a spotless sun, and with the new regions that are going to be rotating into Earth view here over the next kind of three or four days or so, we could see that solar flux begin to rise a little bit, and that will mean that we will maintain marginal radio propagation on Earth's day side easily over the next week, and that should make amateur radio operators and emergency responders quite happy. Now, also because we're still trying to climb out of solar minimum, the cosmic ray flux is still a bit more intense than we'd like it to be, so you frequent flyers, and this does include air crew who fly over 800 
100 hours annually and fly at high altitudes and high latitudes, you are in the marginal range for radiation dose, and this does include prenatal passengers, so please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week is definitely calming down compared to the solar storm launches of last week. We do have a remnant coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth strike zone over the next couple days, and it will send us a little bit of fast solar wind, but likely not all that much to be worried about. Now, aurora photographers at high latitudes, you probably will get a show, but aurora photographers at mid latitudes, eh, you most likely will need to sit this one out. You could get a fleeting show, but only if you're really dedicated. Now, Amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, you know, all those bright regions have rotated off of the Earth-facing disk for the moment, and we're back to being pretty flare quiet, which is nice. At least you don't hear all the, you know, whistles and farts on the bands right now, but it does mean that that solar flux has dropped back to the low end of marginal. However, we're managing to hang on to that, so expect to deal with marginal radio propagation on Earth's day side over the next couple days, and then things might improve just a little bit as some of these new regions rotate into Earth view. So hang in there. We'll, we'll get this sun working yet. Now also, you GPS users, well you guys should be pretty happy. The GPS reception should look pretty good all over for you because we don't really have any strong solar storms going on and the solar flux is managing to stay pretty low. So even at low latitudes and near the dawn dust terminators, your GPS reception should continue to be top-notch. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.